several million city blocks from Times Square, but a private investigator has no official beat. A guy named Roberts was offering me a neat stack for a trip to the Canadian North Woods. And what could I lose? There was also the prospect of a little fishing to boot. Barnett. I'm looking for Mark Roberts. The door's open. Is this Canadian hospitality or is it open season on strangers? Can you prove your name is Barnett? My inside pocket. Well, this is Barnett's wallet, all right. What do you want, a blood test? The wire you sent me's in there, too. Open it. Okay, Barnett. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're glad. Sit down. These things have a nasty bite. Normally, I'm not a nervous man, but I haven't been without this, and I haven't been out of this lodge in three days. Why? Someone's trying to kill me. Why? I know why, but I don't know who. Okay, why? Did you ever hear of Triangle Products? I think so. It's some kind of a holding corporation in the milling business, isn't it? That's right. I control it. I own majority stock. Last year, a group of minority stockholders tried to maneuver it away from me. They lost, and it cost them their fortunes. That's who and why. What about how? It's been my custom to come up here to the Canadian woods each fall, lay out business policy for a year, and get in a little hunting and fishing at the same time. These men know this. Well, accidents can happen in the woods. You know what I mean, Barnett? Yeah. <clears throat> I left my gear out in the veranda. I take it, I'm bunking in here. Sure, we'll bring it in. That's not Roberts. It's someone else. talking about accidents up here in these wilds. Anything happen? Yeah. This. Like a 30-30 slug. What chewed it up? I dug it out of a tree right next to my head. It was no accident. I was standing in plain view at the edge of a lake, and this shot came from across the water a good 300 yards. That means he was using a telescopic sight. You use a scope, you know exactly what you're shooting at. You alone up here? Well, no, there's my wife, Kathy. Then there's Larry Gerald. He's my assistant, a sort of a confidential secretary. Where are they now? Well, Kathy's over at Lake Duchenne. She's the family fisherman. Larry's out taking a walk in the woods. Oh, by the way, he thinks that you're up here on a personal matter. His hobby is uh, collecting wild flowers. And they don't know the real reason I'm here. No, if they did, they would insist on us all going back to New York. But I'm a stubborn man, Mr. Barnett. I mean to have my vacation. Stubborn may not be the word, Mr. Roberts. You seem to have shot up everything in these woods except the mice. You're right. Someone could come up here with a crazy idea about a fake accident in these Canadian wilds. Yeah, and I'm scared. That's why I got you up here. Hiya. Oh, company, huh? I thought I heard the plane. This is Mr. Barnett. He's from New York. Oh, how are you? I'm Larry Gerald. That's here. Oh, I got about 17 specimens of rock mallow here. Nearly broke my neck getting them. I feel just like a June bride. <laughs> oh, I'm not crazy, Mr. Barnett. Just an amateur botanist. It's about the same thing, I suppose. Not at all. But why the rifle? For wild tiger lilies? No, just in case I meet a cougar. Mike Barnett. 
Aren't you a private investigator? He's the chap I got up here to help me out with my office personnel security program. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Well, look, a few men will excuse me. I'll uh, go inside and wash the uh, wilds of Canada off my hands and face. Oh, uh, nice to have met you, Mr. Bonnet. Same here. Your wife and your secretary, huh? That takes care of your family. What about your neighbors? There aren't any. Flying in this morning, I saw a campfire about a mile from here. You've got company. I have, eh? Where was it? On a lake. From the air, it was crescent-shaped. Want to walk over and take a look? Saber Lake. You bet I do. Just let me get on some boots. I'll meet you outside. I'll bring your rod. We can't go hunting. At least we can go fishing. Mrs. Roberts, I take it. Yes, and you're Mr. Barnett. Mark said you were coming up on business or some stuffy thing. Well, I hope you can get him out of the house. We're going fishing. Are they hungry up here? They are. They're biting each other. That's a pretty heavy lure. I've been fishing deep. Well, that's where the bass are. I did everything but dredge. Oh, dear. I see you've met Mr. Barnett. Any luck? Didn't even hook a snag. They've all gone south for the winter. <laughs> I've been bragging about your skill to Mr. Barnett. We're going to have a try at Saber Lake. You and Larry can rustle lunch. Save room on the skillet for a big bass. Ha, ha. This river runs into Sable Lake. We can see it from that rock. I've got it. There's a campfire. A man chopping wood. He's no woodsman. He uses an axe like a mashy niblick. Let's pay him a visit. From different directions. you want, eh? Just visiting? You're a guide, I take it. Where's your party? The man I work for, he is not here, as you can see. I'm sorry, but you'll leave this camp right away. I never turn my back on a man with a knife. Drop it, mister! Ooh. All right, on your feet, you. Thanks, Robert. Let me see your hands. Pretty big axe blisters for a woodsman. How'd you get those scars on your fingertips? Hot kettle. I burn him on a hot kettle. Just on your fingertips? How lucky. What's your name? I'm Leclerc. That's as good a name as any for a guy who doesn't want to leave fingerprints. Keep covered, Roberts. What are you looking for? A 30-30 with a long glass eye. You're looking in the wrong place. Well, this is embarrassing. You gentlemen don't look like thieves. Well, welcome to camp. We're not looting. This is Mr. Roberts. He's got a lodge up here. My name's Barnett. We're both from the States. So am I. I'm Towns. Barnett is a private investigator. What has my guy done to warrant this? He just pulled a knife on me. Why'd you find this man? I'm him. He seemed all right. He wanted to get in the bush right away, and so do I. Yeah, I'll bet you did. As fast as you could. 
Uh, you don't think I've aided a fugitive to escape, do you? Just what are you doing up here, Mr. Town? Hunting. That's obvious. Hunting what? See, there's Cougar up here. Why the telescopic sight? I don't want them to get too close. No use for a scope up here. The woods are too thick. And on the open space is near the lake. You uh, shoot much across water, Mr. Town? Now, see here. What is this? Am I trespassing? Is that it? What part of the states did you say you were from? I didn't say. I'm from Fort Tucker. I'm in textile. I'm on vacation. And I'm getting sore. Then why not? The guy, he's got away. I told you to watch him. He's got his knife. You're both armed. You go that way. You go that way. We'll spread out about 100 yards on the double. Work in toward the center. Don't shoot unless you have to. And don't shoot me. to death by a cat. Big cat. A cougar. You think you can get Gerald's body back to the lodge by yourselves? Of course we can, but how do you get a message out of here? That bush pilot who flew you in. He comes over every morning. I always take out a signal panel when I want him to stop. Okay, we'll flag him down tomorrow. He can take the body out and bring back a provincial constable. The police? This was an accident. It was also violent death. Quite violent. Any shells in this? In the magazine. None in the chamber. Oh, well, safety, you know. What are you going to do? Any animal will do that will do it again. I'm going to see if I can pick up his back trail. I knew that cats are careful walkers, putting the back feet into the prints made by the front feet. But that was no help, because on frozen ground, they don't leave footprints. So I had to follow broken twigs, overturned pebbles, and something I noticed which made me suspect how clever an animal I was up against. Trouble. 
I won't shoot on one condition. Tell me why you mutilated your fingertips. Monsieur, I... I kill a man in Quebec City. I escape. How'd you kill him? With a knife. I cut him to pieces. There was a man just killed in these woods. I didn't do it. I swear. He was clawed to death. We sent for the police. You can either wait here with us until they arrive, or you can wait in these woods alone without your knife. Which is it? No, sacre bleu, no. I hate these woods. I die in a week. I go with you. Okay, get moving. Guns and gear on the veranda, ready to go back with him, dear. Are you sure you found everything? I think so. I can't look anymore. I'll try and get some lunch. Mr. Tong? Yes? You say you're in textiles in Pawtucket. I own a couple of mills. Did you ever hear of a fellow named Jensen? Bill Jensen? I ought to. He controls about 50 mills all over the East. Well, so do I. I control Triangle Products. Mr. Jensen has been trying to get me to add my stock to his. His faction have tried every means... Now, see here. I hardly know the man. Well, you don't have to know a man very well to work for him. What are you doing here? I'm your house guest. That's right, Mr. Roberts. He's giving himself up in a murder rap over in Quebec. I want this baby around where I can keep an eye on him. Murder, huh? And you were right, Barnett. A fine lot of people I've run into. I'm glad you're here, Barnett. I think that statement should properly come from me, Roberts. We'll see. Any trace of the cat? No. Is that Gerald's gear out in the veranda? Well, I thought I'd better get it together. I want to look it over. Keep him covered. Yet? There's no hurry. He doesn't fly over till morning. Better do it now, just in case. I'll help you. Well, it won't do any harm. He might just make an extra milk run. I'll get the panel. Let it talk to you alone. Look what I found in Larry's haversack. Telescopic sight. Yeah. And the receiver of Larry's rifle was bored to take a detachable sight. He could have been the sniper who shot at you the other day. Larry? I don't believe it. He wouldn't... Unless somebody put him up to it. Yeah. The person who killed him, maybe. Person? He was killed by a cougar. It was supposed to look like that, but it didn't. Well, who do you think? Let's unroll the panel. My guess is, when Larry recognized me this morning, he got panicky and decided to confess. He went out into the woods to tell you about it, and he was killed by an accomplice before he... But who? It could have been any one of us. We were all separated at the time, remember? Then it wasn't a cougar. It couldn't have been. Cougars can kill people, but they never do. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, what did you find in the woods just now? That's another thing. A cat always circles its prey before striking. Whatever killed Larry found him in a straight line, like a compass course. Well, what do we do now, Barnett? We'll go back. You tell everybody you've got to go back to that rock to pick up the fishing gear we left there. I'll join you outside. 
We'll try a squeeze play. Signal panels laid out, dear. Is Mr. Barnett's room ready? Oh, yes, it's upstairs at the end of the hall, Mr. Barnett. If you don't mind, Mrs. Roberts, I'd like to grab an hour's snooze. And I think I'd better hike over to Sabre Lake. I left about $200 worth of fishing tackle over there this morning. I don't want it to get ruined. I won't be long. How do you keep the grove covered till Roberts gets back? to do. Yeah. Which one do you think will show up? I don't know. But one thing for sure, we'll soon find out. Stockholder of Triangle Products Corporation. As your widow, she become the majority stockholder. Kathy! Here are the Cougars claws, the head of a fishing gap. She'll be coming to in a minute. Let's get her back to the lodge until the plane gets here. This cat will have to be caged up until the jury decides how to get rid of her. but the sovereign state of New York. If you tune in on this same channel next week at the same time, you'll see another exciting case reenacted from my private files. Many of the situations have been fictionalized, but what you will witness will be portrayed substantially as it happened and acted on the spot where it happened. You'll witness what occurred in each case when I was assigned to follow that man.